everyone. I am so excited that you're here to tune in with us this week and do a little learning. My name is Ashley Fleming and I am a fourth grade ELA and social studies teacher over at West Hills Elementary School. I miss all of my students so much and I know each of your teachers do as well. Let's go ahead and get started today and we're going to do a little bit of a recap from last week and we're going to continue on with our learning as well. We're going to be reading, talking, and writing together about some mysteries and puzzles that you may have read along with Ms. Snyder last week. If you have the passage, you can go ahead and pull it out now. I know she asked you if you have been able to complete any puzzles. Maybe you've challenged yourself since last week to do that. There are many kinds of puzzles and mysteries all around us. Maybe you found one in your own backyard or in your own home. I've been working on some different puzzles with my daughters. One of the strategies I always like to teach them is to start with the edge pieces first and work on the border and then fill it in, which kind of reminded me of how we look for the main idea of the text and then we fill it in with those key details. Today we're going to look back at the text, Don't Believe What You See, and we're going to check back in on what you learned and see if we can stretch our minds further on the topic. Remember, we can always find new information as we reread, and it makes us stronger, more fluent readers. I can't wait to look back at the text and show you what I took away and how I've tried to find more information. I'm gonna share with you my summary of the text and have you help me look for some key components. I'm also gonna challenge you to extend your learning with what we have completed in today's lesson. Let's refresh our memories on what makes a great detective or sleuth. What are some of the characteristics you remember from class or from last week? Yeah, those are great ideas. You may have mentioned that they solve mysteries or that sometimes they have to work with others. Those are some great traits. And I thought about how they had to take their time and look carefully for those clues like we do in a text. Sometimes they have to look more than once, which is what we're going to do today. Last week, I also remember Miss Snyder saying that a sleuth can also mean a bloodhound, like a dog used for tracking clues. She mentioned that we can combine these two ideas and create a compound word. We can combine sleuth and hound and become sleuth hounds. We're going to reread the letter to you, sleuth hounds. Dear Junior Sleuth Hound, mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do to solve mysteries? Become a sleuth hound. Look for clues. Ask interesting questions. Then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. Let's also take a look back at these tools around in the pictures. I notice camera. What does that make you think of? Well, I thought about how there's pictures and illustrations that go along with the text a lot of times that help give us more information or help us to understand the text better. What about those keys? Makes me think of key details or unlocking a mystery. Hmm, a flashlight. Flashlights kind of point in a certain direction. Maybe a point of view, a main idea. I also see a compass. Compasses also kind of point us in the right direction. That made me kind of think of like an author's purpose, his reasoning for writing the text. And last at the bottom, I see a pencil. That reminds me that sometimes we need to make notes and organize our thoughts, especially if we're gonna make a case and prove it. Of course, being a super sleuth involves several steps. Take a look back at the steps with me. I notice that the steps are divided into four parts. Look for clues, ask questions, make your case, and prove it. Take a second to read more carefully about what each one of these steps involves.
Last week, we thought about some mysteries and puzzles throughout history, like the lost colony of Roanoke, which got me to thinking about the Lewis and Clark story that we read and what we've learned about in social studies and how they had to explore all that area that was bought in the Louisiana Purchase. They had some specific goals that they were trying to accomplish and a lot of information that had to, they had to bring back to President Jefferson. And of course, there are even mysteries and puzzles we can see in our everyday life. Today, we're going to be sleuths and read more about some puzzles we can figure out. To be a good sleuth or detective, we must gather evidence, ask questions, make our case, and prove it. We see these tips right here on the page. Gather evidence. How do sleuths remember clues? Ask questions. Why do sleuths ask questions? Make your case. How do sleuths disagree with other sleuths? Wow, that's a great one. And prove it. What do sleuths do, or excuse me, what do sleuths think about before showing what they have learned? Take a second to also read about these sleuth tips. Now, during our unit on mysteries and puzzles, some of the stories you may have read in class were Case of the Gasping Garbage, Navajo Code Talkers, even Seeker of Knowledge. These were all building on the essential question of how can problem solving lead to an explanation of events around us? Today, we're going to be rereading a text called Don't Believe What You See. For those of you who have already read the text and those of you who are needing to catch up, this is going to give us a chance just to look back at the text and gather a little more information. Then I want to share a summary I created and then let's check for some more and for specific information. Follow along as I reread the text to you. We're also going to make sure to point out those key vocabulary words that we talked about last week. Have you ever felt like your eyes were playing tricks on you? You might have been experiencing an optical illusion. Optical illusions trick us into thinking that we are seeing something different than what is actually there for us to see. Optical illusions occur because our brain perceives an image in a particular way. I remember Ms. Snyder talking more deeply about the word optical illusions. Do you remember what optical meant? Yes, it refers to your vision. And an illusion comes from the Latin root that means right, mocking or tricking. So optical illusions literally means something that is tricking your eyes. Let's keep reading further about some specific examples. Optical illusions are all around us. They occur in the natural world. A familiar illusion on a hot summer day is called a mirage. It's called a what? Good, a mirage. When driving along a hot road, sometimes our eyes seem to think that there is water on the road in front of us. As we approach that spot, we realize it was just an illusion. This happens because the heat from the road is rising and light from the sun hits it in a way that makes our eyes think there's water ahead. Now, here's what I love about this paragraph. The author is explaining something that happens in the natural world. If it was a little confusing to understand what he was talking about, I like how he used the picture above to give us a little bit of a visual of what he means. Because this is scientific. This is something that had to be investigated and people had to study why this image was appearing in front of us on this hot road. I really like how the details in the paragraph and the picture help me to understand that better. Some animals and insects use illusions. Lions blend into long brown grass around them. This keeps them hidden from their soon to be meals. Do you remember what that's called? Right, their prey. Insects, such as the walking stick, use an illusion to keep from being eaten. They are the prey. The walking stick looks like its name suggests, a stick. So 
in this paragraph, I hear more details about how these animals have blended in or camouflaged in to their natural environment, either to be the predator or to help not be the prey. The visuals on the page help me to understand that and it explains the mysteries and puzzles in the natural world. Last, let's finish up. Besides natural illusions, there are many human-made illusions too. Sometimes people call these brain teasers. Pictures are created to show different things at different times. Sometimes people don't see the same things in the same picture. One example of this is a picture that shows the word me. When that same picture is looked at a bit differently, you may see the word you in it. Optical illusions are not only fun to look for, but they have uses in nature. Keep your eyes open, but remember that you can't always believe what you see. In this last piece of the text, I read more about how these illusions not only happen in the natural world, but that they're so fun and interesting to people that they decided to start creating them themselves. They called them what? Right, brain teasers. Kind of like optical illusions, playing tricks on your eyes, brain teasers are kind of playing tricks on your brain. It makes you think you see one thing one minute, but maybe you see something different in the next. All right, now that we finished the text, I want to share with you how I summarize this information. Now, before I wrote, I made sure to gather evidence like the good sleuth that I am. I noticed it said to find some details specifically three, that tell more about optical illusions. So I jotted those down on my own paper before writing my summary. I thought about the things that they had mentioned, like the mirages, the blending or camouflaging that animals do, and also the brain teasers that people created to trick their eyes. Now, I also wanna make sure to include a clear topic sentence and a conclusion sentence in my paragraph. I wonder what other things I should have. Go ahead and say them aloud. What kind of things have you and your class talked about this year that can be included in a well-written summary or paragraph? Those are probably all great things to include in my summary. I know that in our classroom, we try to use the details in our own voice so we're not copying right from the text and that we're trying to elaborate or explain to really show our understanding of the topic. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I came up with. Optical illusions trick our eyes to believe we see things that are not really there. For example, on a really hot summer day, you might think you see water sitting on the road ahead of you. This is a mirage. Actually, the light from the sun is reflecting on the heat rising on the road. Another familiar optical illusion is animals using camouflage to blend into their surroundings. This may be seen when they blend into tall grass, like a lion to wait for his prey, or disguise themselves as another object, like a walking stick, to avoid being another's prey. Optical illusions are so fascinating that humans create their own. These are called brain teasers. You can look at an image and see two different things. You may have experienced a variety of optical illusions in life, and it is always fun and interesting to learn more. Now, can you go back to my paragraph and find the topic sentence? Go ahead and read it out loud. Did I mention that the topic that I was going to be summarizing? Good. Hopefully you saw this sentence here. Optical illusions trick our eyes to believe we see things that are not really there. What's the topic that I'm going to be elaborating on? Good, optical illusions right there in the sentence. Now, the next thing I wanted to include was a conclusion statement to wrap up my paragraph to help with that organization part of it. 
hmm, I also need to make sure that this restates my topic. Can you find the conclusion sentence? Go ahead and read it out loud. Hopefully you found this sentence here. You may have experienced a variety of optical illusions in life, and it is always fun and interesting to learn more. This again mentions optical illusions and restates the idea that they're all around us. Now, the next thing I wanted to include in my good summary were those key details and examples from the text. Can you find one? What about another? Hopefully you saw those text details in some of these areas. I mentioned the hot summer day being a mirage on the road. Another one might be the animals that camouflage or blend in with their surroundings. And last, I talked about those human made brain teasers. I made sure to try to elaborate and explain in my own words as to not copy straight from the text. I also wanted to make sure that I used a variety of transitions, or I also wanted to make sure that I involved those key vocabulary words that were mentioned in the text and really showed my understanding. Like blending in with the grass, I tried to make sure that I also wanted to reference that as camouflage because I've learned that previously. Another extension to the text was to research some optical illusions on the internet. Here were a couple of the ones I found. I noticed that some of these are in nature, but others are just brain teasers. Take a look at the picture in number one. What do you notice right away? Good. I noticed the bunny. I noticed that his eye is right here. Here's his nose and his mouth and his long floppy ears. Maybe you didn't notice the bunny right away. Maybe you noticed some type of, yeah, bird, look at this. What if these long floppy ears now become the beak and there's his eye. So the eye stayed the same, but the direction of the animal changed and the animal itself changed. I love these kind of pictures. Now, one of my favorites are these spot the difference. These two images are meant to look exactly the same, but if you look very closely like good sleuths do, you'll notice that there are 10 differences in the picture. Feel free to come back to this slide later and try to find all 10. The last one I wanted to show you were those animals and things that are happening in the natural world around us. Take a look at image number three. Does it look like just a plain leaf to you? Look really carefully. What do you see? Maybe you finally now see there's a caterpillar right here in the center of this leaf. He blends in right to the leaf. He might even be eating the leaf or he might be protecting himself from being eaten. Just like that walking stick in the text. Now, I would like to challenge you this week to do some further investigations. Find another animal that uses illusions in nature. I have put some questions on your handout to help you on your search for information. I myself did a Google search on some animals that use illusions to camouflage. If you're having trouble finding some information, go back to the Knox County Web resource page and see if you can use any of the search engines provided there, or maybe even your library and media page on your school's website. There are many activities you can do with the information that you collect. Here are some options. Write a short summary paragraph like the one I shared with you today, making sure to include some of those key components to a well-written paragraph. Do you remember what some of them are? Good a topic sentence, a conclusion sentence, maybe some key details that were found and using your own voice to elaborate and explain. Share it with someone at your house, maybe a stuffed animal even, or maybe even keep it in a journal to add to and share it with your class when you return to school. 
Some of you might be familiar with Google Slides and want to create a presentation with key information and images of your animal. These are great for showing your techie side. And again, you can share them with your family or class later on. You can even create an informational poster with pictures and captions and teach someone in your house about the animal that you researched. Today, we revisited the idea of mysteries and puzzles. What is one way we can explain the events around us? Think about that mirage. How was that explained? We discussed how to use key details from the text to create a summary of a text and the components that made up a well-written paragraph. We talked about a challenge to find more information on an animal that uses illusions to camouflage itself in nature. You may answer these by writing a paragraph, drawing pictures, discussing it with someone in your house, or even creating a Google slide presentation. You can also look for optical illusions around your house or outside. You may even ask an adult in your house to help you research some human-made optical illusions. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and we really hope that you'll come back next week to also read, talk, and write some more about uh, some new information, maybe some more mysteries and puzzles. Thanks again, and I hope you have a great day.